Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over the Adafruit Metro Mini and the TB6612 board. The TB6612 board is also an Adafruit board. In this video, there won't be the Nexion component. I'm just going to use the Arduino IDE, and then I'm going to follow it up with a video where I do the similar things, but instead of physical um, potentiometers and switches, we'll use the Nexion. I'm going to start with the basic configuration, and you can download this if you want to follow along from the Cheap Controls website. There will be a tutorial in written form that uh, will accompany this. The first thing we'll do is we'll add a variable. We're going to use this motor counter, and I'm going to do that because we're going to step through every second. We're going to increment the counter, and then we'll have the motor turn on and off based upon where it is in the count. And we'll also add a bunch of variables. We're going to control an LED. We're going to control a DC motor, or a couple LEDs, a DC motor. We're going to have switches to change the direction of the DC motor. And finally, we'll have two inputs, or potentiometers, to control the LED brightness. I have the delay length set to 100 or 1,000 milliseconds, or every second. So we're going to trigger this delay function every second. I'm going to have this set up to work over a 20 second period. So the motor will be stopped, and then it's going to run one direction for five seconds, then it's going to stop for five seconds, and then it'll run the other direction for five seconds. And we're going to do this based upon the motor counter variable. If the value hits 21, we want to reset it back to one. And then we're going to break it up into five second intervals. So if it's 20 to 16, we're going to have the motor running in one direction. If it's 11 to 15, we're going to have it stop. And down here, if it's 5 to 10, we'll have it running the other direction. And then finally, 1 to 5, we'll have it stop. So we'll start in the stop, stop state, spin, stop, spin, and then repeat that. The reason that I like this Adafruit board is because it's similar to an Uno, but it has the footprint of an almost of an Anno. It has two more pins than an Anno. Plus, the Adafruit has an output pin, and I can't really show it in this video, that has a USB power out. So it's kind of nice if you need a little extra power and you're going to run this over the USB bus. And you can see I have it set up right now, and I have the lights flashing on pins 9 and 10. And one LED, I have the LED representing the motor. So one LED comes on for 5 seconds, and then they both go off for 5 seconds, and then the other one goes on for 5 seconds. I'm going to start the serial monitor. I'm going to hook up a motor so that you can see when the, when the motor should be running and shouldn't be running. And you can see right now it says, well, it said the motor was running, and then it went to stopped. And then it'll go to running, but you can see that it's not running. And that's because right now I have the motor plugged into the pins, the output pins of the Metro Mini, instead of the output pins of the uh, controller itself. So the Metro Mini doesn't have the power to run the motor, and that's why we need that TB6612 in line. And now I've got it switched to the outputs, and I'll try to put a little arrow to show you where. And now you can see that the motor runs fine. I don't have the direction displayed, and you can't really tell in the video which way it's running, so I'm assuming it's reversing. I'll show you that on the uh, windmill here when we're done. But that's the reason that you want that TB6612. Now, there are some cases where it might run directly powered by the Adafruit, but it's not a good idea because you are stressing the outputs on the little uh, Metro Mini. And now I'm going to want to change the delay. I'm going to go back to the main tab and set it to 50 milliseconds. So now we're going to run that delay loop really fast. And instead of using a counter, we're going to use the buttons to control um, the direction of the motor. So you can see the code is greatly reduced by doing this. So we're just going to take digitally read pin 11, and if it's low, we're going to digitally write pin 9 high. The reason that I have it low is because I have the input set as a, as a pull-up high. So the normal state is high, and I don't want the motor to run unless I push a button. So if both of them are high, both the outputs will be low. But if I press 11 or 12 and make those inputs go low, the motor should spin one direction or the other. 
For this, I'm going to show it to you with LEDs because there is a, a weird circumstance that happens, and I want to be able to show you that. So we'll switch over to the camera. So now you can see I've got the LEDs hooked up. And so now when I push the buttons, the lights should come on. But I do have them on the Adafruit outputs. I don't have them on the controller outputs. And you can see if I press one button, one light comes on. And if I press the other button, the other light comes on. And if I press both buttons, both lights come on. Remember, this is on the side of the Adafruit. Now I'm going to move them to the controller side. So now when I press one button, one light comes on. And when I press the other button, the other light comes on. But if I press both buttons, no light comes on. And so you can only control one of the one of the outputs. So you cannot have both outputs on at the same time. And now I'll show you the TB6612 in action driving a, a better load. I've built a little windmill out of this uh, Luxblox product. The Luxbox product is a product that a friend of mine sells. I really like it. It's, it's a lot better. I find it a lot better than Legos. I really enjoy um, building the structures out of it. And you're going to start seeing it a lot more in the Cheap Controls videos. And he's even got a discount code if you want to use it. There's a link over at the website. But if you're on the, if you're on the Luxbox site, it's Cheap Controls 25. You get a 25% discount. I don't get anything for endorsing him. I just really like the product. I'm just going to try and hold the camera on it. I really don't have a good way to shoot these yet. So let's just see what happens. So this is one button. And then if you want to reverse directions, just hit the other button. And Ed is the, Ed Malloy does the write up for this one. So as he says, if you guys make a black hole or something, you know, that's on you, and if you destroy the universe, don't come complaining to cheap controls now. But uh, like I said, you're going to see the uh, Lux more appear more in some of the upcoming videos, just because it's kind of fun. Or I know in one of the upcoming ones, we're going to measure a load cell as we smash something together, and I'm going to make it out of uh, the Lux stuff. Um, so now I'm going to leave the motor control inputs in there and just leave them as is, because that doesn't really matter. But I'm going to control the LEDs. And so I'm going to use A1 and A2 inputs to control pins 5 and 6, which feed through the TB6612. The analog read, or the inputs on A1 and A2, read values of 0 to 1025, whereas the PWM outputs are 0 to 255. So if I just want to be quick and not use the map function, I just analog read my input, divide it by 4, and then analog write it out my digital output. Now you have to remember it has to be a digital output that supports pulse width modulation, but in this case, 5 and 6 both do. Now in this case, I've done exactly what I've done before. I have the LEDs hooked up on the Adafruit side of the board, or the Metro Mini side, and then we'll move them over after we see it working. I don't know how well this comes through the video, but I'm trying to dim and brighten them so you show that they work independently and it works just fine. But remember when I did the motor, how you can only have one input on at a time. So now when I switch these over to the controller side, you'll see that it behaves strangely. And just, uh, just so you know, I designed this little board here um, that, that accepts both the parts and it makes it really easy to switch between the two. So now I have them switched over, and I'll do one at a time. And you can see that the pulse width modulation goes through the board just fine. But I'm going to turn one up, and now I'm going to adjust the other one. And you can see that it goes down as the other one goes up. And now I'll adjust the other one back up. And it made them both go off. But now as I turn the one down, the other one went up. And, and I'm controlling the opposite one right now. So it's just kind of strange. It, it looks like you can only do pulse width modulation on one at a time. So now they're both off. If I turn one up at a time, 
See, that one went up just fine. And then the other one, you can pass PWM through this TB6612. I'd like a little bit of feedback to know if you like the fact of a little bit shorter video and a little bit longer write-up over on the Cheap Controls website and more of a blog type post. The reason that I also like the blog post is I should be able to update if there's an error or a change. It's hard to update these videos, but it's easy to update the blog post so I can make a change or put a note in or something like that. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.